All right, thanks, Kia. So we just had a prayer. Kia is a graduating senior from Northern Arizona University. Yes. Shout out to Kia, yay! Awesome. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Exciting. So thank you so much, Kia, for opening up with the prayer. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, President Robbins. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we got a tight schedule, so we are gonna get going here. Uh, my name is Mandy Chermaya. Good morning, I'm from the Pueblo of Laguna. I'm a doc student in higher education within the College of Ed. Um, and I'm so honored that all of you are here to join us. Um, I particularly would like to honor my mom and my sister for being here because they have invested in our institution for the last 16 years through my educational journey. And I honor them and it's because of my mom that I was able to come to the University of Arizona as a freshman in 2004. Felice? Awesome. Hello, my name is Felicia Tagaban. I am from the Diné and Clinkett Nation. Um, I'm graduating today. It's an awesome day. I'm super excited that all of you are here to start the celebration. Um, I'm actually also here because of Miss Eloise Cobell. I'm a Cobell scholar. Um, the work that she did to take on the United States federal government in the way of supporting Native peoples has been inspiring to me and also a huge reason why I'm funded for school. So I am also uh, uh, dedicating my graduation and this day to her and to her legacy for our people. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we are going to have um, just some of the guidelines. Please put yourself on mute. Um, uh, Felice, me, and Dr. Rhodes will be um, facilitating this. Um, and so if you can please show your face as well, if you're able to do that, we would love to see you. And because we're not gonna have opportunity for people to share in this meeting, if you can flood the, the comment box with your voice, share what you're thinking as we're going through this meeting, that'd be really, really awesome and helpful. Um, so first, uh, we're just gonna set the scene really quick. Um, on April 27th, Felice and I met with Provost folks um, to discuss the Native Store proposal that we had submitted. Uh, and in that discussion, um, there was some words that were exchange in that conversation, um, words that left us disheartened, um, to be quite honest, but the meeting here today is to uh, kind of express how we're, not kind of, we are expressing how we're feeling um, in regards to that conversation and how we were treated and how we felt. Um, but first, we would like to share um, a video that some of our students have created um, in regards to, as we shared our comments, um, they are processing just as much as we are, so I'd like to share this video with you. The leaders of the University of Arizona make racially inappropriate statements like those recently made by President Robbins and the provost and provost folks. They bring forward thoughts, beliefs, and traditions of settler colonialism that frames indigenous peoples as a problem. Bringing these problematic thoughts and behaviors into their interaction with indigenous college students clearly demonstrates that the institution and its leadership has not invested enough time and resources into making the University of Arizona a safe and welcoming space for indigenous peoples. To be perfectly clear, Indigenous peoples are not problems. Hearing the remarks made by President Robbins and Provost Folks is a painful and hurtful experience as an Occam student. If you, Arizona really wants to meet the needs of Indigenous students and communities, our voices, our stories, our experiences, and our people need to be centered, welcomed, and represented within this institution. Those remarks do not show us that we are welcome here on our own lands and instead show that the university only has its own interests and image in mind. Upon hearing the comments made by the provost, I was left with the impression that the native student population at the UA must be viewed by this administration as a burden. After considering her words, I feel that the statements made by the provost likely reflect the position of this administration and are indicative of the place from which diversity support programs are sponsored. The provost likely unwittingly revealed that support provided to Native American students is not centered around student support, but rather around image management, which is intended to project an appearance of diversity and inclusivity for public relations purposes. I'm very troubled by this incident. Provost, you have impacted many of my mentees and mentors, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically where they're at an institution where they should feel welcomed, but they are not. Provost folks, while our narratives and lived experiences may be new to you, your approach framework to supporting indigenous students in higher education is outdated and incorrect. I beg you to reconsider and listen to Felice and Mandy as we consider them the experts in this field 
and know firsthand how impactful Native Soil is to our Indigenous students on campus. Your use of macroaggressive language is antithetical to the University of Arizona's tribal relationships mission to develop opportunities in support of Native American student recruitment, retention, and graduation. Furthermore, your deficit-oriented perspective further underlines the institution's dire need to adhere to their own public mission statement of developing an understanding of tribal governance, enterprises, culture, customs among the university's administrators. The University of Arizona, the indigenous peoples of Arizona deserve better and are not a burden. Mandy, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, so th those are some voices um, from students here at the University of Arizona, students who pay tuition here and invest in our community. And um, to be quite honest, I am really, I'm really anxious and I have a lot of anxiety about this meeting because it's reflective of what happened a few months ago. And as a student, this is very, very troublesome <laughs> to kind of go through this cycle again and being here. But I'm honored to be here because I know the right thing to do is to stand up and to share how we are impacted as indigenous students, especially from uh, leaders, senior leaders, some of the top two highest paid leaders on our campus and how we are here again in this place to communicate how macroaggressions have impacted me and Felice, but also beyond our community. Um, so provost folks, the right thing to do when we have a grievance, and we've always done this, we've always wanted to operate with the highest level of integrity, is to communicate to you and communicate with you and your community and our community so that we have this open dialogue. So when we met with the provost on, on April 27th, um, we were there to hear about what provost folks had decided regarding our native SOAR proposal. And during the meeting, um, Felice had asked some questions about, you know, what is your rationale? Um, please consider some things when you consider our population, um, that we are different. We are not like every other population on this campus. We are very complex. Um, if you have to prove your identity through a card, you know, provost folks and President Robbins, I don't think you have to do that um, to prove your, that you're indigenous through a, a certificate of Indian blood. That in itself speaks to the complexity of our population. And so provost folks, when you were communicating, I just wanna read this, I wanna make sure I have it right when you're describing your rationale and who we are as students. Um, the university quotes, invest in native students in ways that will never recover. We subsidize their education in ways that we will never recover. She concluded by stating, quote, that her primary role is, quote, to save the institution. So I'm fighting back tears right now because when I read that, I think about my mom and my sister who sent me here, provided support to, for me to be here, and invested 16 years of my life to advancing our university's mission and to advance American Indian education here on our campus. And provost folks, when I heard those words, there's a sense of uh, feeling belittled. I felt that your words demeaned me as a student on this campus. I felt intimidated, I felt disheartened, and I felt discouraged. Because as a leader, isn't your goal supposed to help serve and advance students like me? And students like us, isn't our goal as an institution for all of us to save the institution? And being here and hearing words like that from you and being in a place of vulnerability, knowing that there's these huge power dynamics, it wasn't right and it was very unprofessional. And I wanted to express those words to you directly with our community here because these words don't only affect me, they affect a lot of other people. Please. Provost folks, uh, Dr. Robbins, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is challenging um, and it's especially challenging because we're doing it through a screen. I, I really do wish that we were in person and I wish that you could see the community and the support that we have um, I think that that's easily forgotten in meetings like this, but we invited so many of our uh, family and friends because we wanted them to witness uh, the response that we think is absolutely necessary. 
And the reason why this is so incredibly hurtful is because uh, we met with you, Dr. Robbins, in November. And we remember the assurances and the commitments, the promises that you made to not only support and invest in Native students, but you also said that you wanted us to hold you accountable. And so we took you at your word. And when you said that to us and to our entire campus and community members, and we, we honored that. You know, we, we forgave you and we, we moved on and we, we reached into uh, this time now to, to go beyond the, the apology and really do some good work. And so to enter into Provost Folks meeting and endure the same, same short-sighted, ignorant statements is very painful. It reenacts the harm and the violence that we had in the first encounter with you, Dr. Robbins, but it further brings light to the systemic issues that we've been referring to this entire time. There's a problem in the mindset of our institution and our institutional leaders and the way that you think about and support and serve Native people and Native communities. It's racist, it's short-sighted, it's ignorant, and it needs to change. So we're here today because we want you to see the impact personally and then corporately. Because like Mandy said, when you speak to one of us, you are speaking to all of us. So I want you to hear what we're saying to you and what has been said. And we want you to look forward with us to imagine something completely different. So we're asking for your attention and for your ears and for your heart in that matter. So as we were in the meeting, uh, Provost folks had mentioned what the university is committing towards indigenous populations. Uh, one of the comments that was mentioned is that there hasn't been a request that has come in from indigenous people that the university hasn't fulfilled. Uh, we recognize that um, and we are grateful for those communities to have resources, knowing that the university could do more, but we recognize that there are steps um, that have changed since um, September, October. And when Provost folks, when you were in the meeting, you basically gave us a list of all the things that the university is doing or is going to do. And the way that it felt was that you gave us this laundry list of like, here, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And what I heard and perceived was basically saying, you should be thankful that we're doing this. And take to, I took it as a sense of like a charitable donation. Like, this is what we're doing, be thankful, basically. And, and that is a great hindrance and a great challenge to hear and to be a part of that conversation. So I want to bring back um, this, this necklace. So Dr. Robbins, you have the, uh, the Papa Bear uh, necklace because the shell is a lot bigger, but it's, it, this shell is a lot smaller. I got it at the feast at Laguna. Um, and so I, I gave you one of the necklaces that I got, the Papa Bear version, because the shell is huge. And, and I want to remind you that that was a sign, not a sign of charity. It's a sign of peace, a sign of dialogue, a sign of encouragement, and a sign of commitment that we're not going anywhere, that we are here for the long run. And we're going to keep knocking and we're going to keep coming. And so our hope is that this dialogue will open up even further because it seems like it hasn't been working because <laughs> we're in the same place again. <laughs> Dr. Robbins, you gave, you handed off the responsibility to the provost, which we get, they're systematic and there's, there's organizational things you do at an institution, but we're in the same place where twice these macroaggressions have deeply offended us and touched us and hurt us. And so we wanna ask you, Dr. Robbins, uh, what the, le what the necklace means to you personally, and what does this mean to you as a representative of an institution that resides on the homelands of the Thana Atham Pasquayaki Nation, and given that we're a land-grant institution. This university benefits far more off of grants and other types of funding that comes from tribal nations that honestly, the university could never make that up to the tribal nations. So with that, 
uh, we want to ask you and have you respond. Briefly, as you've only given us half an hour to speak and to share, if you would please maintain the five minute mark, please, for your comments. Well, I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, speak to you today. Uh, I, uh, I'm sorry that we're here again. Uh, and I, I hear you. I understand uh, the hurt that you're feeling. Uh, Mandy, the, the necklace I have had on my desk since the day that you gave it to me. And it means to me a, uh, a, a gift of grace and your forgiveness for my macroaggressions that I committed against you uh, and all the students and uh, all of your extended uh, family and uh, network. Uh, and I, I would just say that we do wanna move forward and look to the future uh, together. Um, the, the well-being of uh, Native students at the University of Arizona are important to me, and I know they're important to Provost folks and to all of our administration. Uh, I do think there is an opportunity for us to all move forward together despite um, the setbacks that we have. Uh, and I'm committed to do that. And I know that Provost Folks is uh, committed to do that as well. I do think that um, we're moving forward uh, with the search for the senior vice president position. Uh, and I know that there will be, uh, there, I've uh, now met with three of the finalists and look forward to meeting with the last person. And, uh, and I appreciate all the work and many of you were on the search committee for that. And I think that's gonna be a, a, a very positive step moving forward, um, that the resources will be given to uh, that office to be able to support the needs of our students, our faculty, uh, and our partnerships with our native nations uh, here in Arizona and from wherever our students come from. Thank you, Provost folks. If you would like to, spot, to respond, there's two and a half minutes left. Sure, I welcome the opportunity and I'm grateful to, to Amanda and Felice for sharing their uh, feedback to me directly. Uh, I apologize without reservation for uh, macroaggressions, but also for pain. Uh, and it is never my intention to cause pain for any student and especially not to wonderful student leaders. And I too, I, I, you know, I, these are just words and it is my actions by which you should judge me, but I am deeply, deeply committed to supporting our Native American students, faculty and staff in every manner possible to ensure that they're able to flourish and thrive on our campus, in their lives, in our communities. Uh, it, you, all I can do is act in ways that support that. And uh, I'm looking forward to also continuing to work with you to the best extent possible, but also with many, many other people in our community and on our campus to make sure that we are pulling in directions of goodness together. Thank you. So we appreciate your responses. We forgive you. Uh, as we said, and we, we will continue to say that our purpose in meeting with you and in talking to you in this way uh, is to honor our traditions. You know, when something's been made wrong, we always open the opportunity for things to be made right. But the thing is, there's a difference that I think might be, uh, might be lost in translation and might be lost across culture. And that is that our words, when we speak them, they carry weight. Our words, when we say them, mean something. We're not uh, a core value to put up on a website. We're not an espoused value of diversity and inclusion or compassion or any of those things. We are actually giving you words and those words carry commitment and they carry honor, they carry respect, and they're supposed to carry reciprocity. And so we're asking you to not make uh, empty promises because as you know, we as a people are accustomed to receiving a lot of empty promises. 
And we're here because we want to break that tradition, whether it's with the institution of the United States government or its religious institutions or even its um, educational institutions, which we're situated in today. We're here to change things and imagine something different. We can only do that together. There's an exchange. And so when Mandy and, and our community gave you that necklace, it is supposed to mean uh, reciprocity in the way that it's not charity, it's not a subsidy, it's, it's, it's a movement towards healing and recognizing there have been wrongs that need to be made right. And so in that, we are asking you to, number one, revisit the Native SOAR proposal to rethink your decision concerning the Native SOAR proposal, consider it as it was originally submitted. The second thing is to recognize the cultural, historical, and material genocide by joining us and moving forward to create a new story. See, we keep bringing up the past, but it's important because we have to remember uh, how our peoples were impacted but more importantly, how we're situated today in a place of empowerment and a place of, uh, of, of looking to something better, to something hopeful. So we're asking you to co-structure, to create with us and to move forward. We're looking to partner and we wanna do it in the way of reciprocity and respect. In short, we're asking you both to move beyond an apology, to move beyond a land acknowledgement, to move beyond the institutional commitment statements. We're asking you as leaders of this institution to commit to making incremental financial investments in Native American students. And again, we're not interested in the laundry list of things that you've already shared. We're aware of those things. We, we celebrate those things. Yes, thank you. But we're asking to go beyond even that. We're asking uh, that you would commit to finance, financially backing us. And we are fully aware of the country and the institution's financial landscape. However, we believe that the institution is capable of investing and in doing so much better moving forward. So with that, those are the things we're asking for. And we're asking also for the support and the voice of our uh, faculty department head, Dr. Gary Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Felice. Uh, there, I, I sent a letter, uh, Liesl, to you and Bobby just a short time ago. Obviously, you haven't had time to read it. Um, and and I, wanted, I wanted to do two things in that letter, and I'll try and do them very briefly here. Uh, not easy for me to be brief. <laughs> uh, it is hard to express how difficult it is for me as a department head in which these two outstanding students have excelled for years to hold back and allow them to take the lead on this meeting and on other meetings. It is only out of respect for them that I do that because in any other situation, my outrage as a senior faculty member who's been here 34 years at how students are being treated would have been at the fore. So I'm in the background because of the courage and grace of these students, but I'm not out of this. Uh, I feel deeply exactly what they had to say about no student should be treated this way, period. Um, the second thing I wanna say is the narrative that um, was articulated is one that I think too often these institutions articulate and Mandy, and Felice and the, and the students on the video spoke to it beautifully. The relationship between land-grant universities and Native nations and students is not one of the institutions as charity and subsidy of those students. It is entirely backwards to think in that way. Backward and backwards. And so I would ask that you reset that assumption publicly that you state explicitly along with land acknowledgements that this institution has historically and continues to benefit materially and spiritually from the presence and the lands 
of the students in na Native nations who, uh, on whose lands we sit and whose students and citizens attend this university and work at this university. And then I've offered um, a couple of creative examples of how using indirect cost recovery monies, a very small amount from the millions of dollars of grant monies that are conducted on tribal lands could be dedicated to undergraduate and graduate research assistants who are native. Uh, and how the foundation, which in this time is making gifts to the university for public relations activities, could be making a gift to Native SOAR to support graduate students studying uh, the experience of Native students. I know these are really tight financial times, but in these tight financial times, the center of which I'm director, the department of which I'm head, has made a financial commitment to these students, as has the college in which I'm situated, which is not one of the wealthier colleges on campus. So I fully expect if I've been able to husband resources in a way, and my colleagues have been able to husband resources in a way to directly support these students now, uh, that given your positions of authority, you can also make that happen very soon and into the future incrementally, as Mandy and Felice said. So uh, I just so admire these students and I've learned over the years how much our center and college benefit from the presence and wisdom and gifts of these students and staff. And I hope the university comes to that understanding very soon because as Mandy said, these students and staff are not going away. They were here long before us and they will be here long after we leave. Thank you. Thank you. So Dr. Zepeda, as an Otham woman and very, very respected among our community, will you please close with a prayer? Thank you, Mandy and Felice. Um, มาตวมกีกมทมัจกมกาวสิจวดตสกุกตวสิจวดตสอปตกปะชามัสมามีออยดีตมจบากมัสจมตกไคจุมาจิกกะกะมัสจมตกญามาตบอจิมาตวสิ